when we direct, we want to maintain a bright awareness of our environment and to avoid trying to do the directions or get too involved with trying to make release happen. Instead, we want to organize and maintain our awareness of key body parts and points of contact and then ask for what we want, leave things alone even as changes take place, and stick to this process for an extended period of time. In practice, this might look like doing a lie down in which, having gotten into the semi-supine position with some books beneath your head, you take time to be present <clears throat> as you look at the ceiling in the room you're in, you notice the contact of your head on the books, your back and pelvis against the floor, your knees pointing to the ceiling, and you decide to be attentive to these while aiming to hold them in your awareness consistently. Having spent some time with this, you begin to give your primary directions or guiding orders, as Alexander sometimes called them, continuing to maintain your awareness of your head, back, pelvis, and knees. You ask for your neck to let go so that your head can come out of your back, so that your back can lengthen and widen, so that your knees can go up towards the ceiling and away from each other. Importantly, you want to definitely say no to the immediate desire to do these directions in some definite way, as well as the desire to figure out or feel what's going on in your body or muscles. Our job is to stop the flow of habitual messages that are telling our muscles to tighten unnecessarily and are interfering with our natural system of coordination and replace them with new, consciously given messages which will bring about muscle length in key areas such that our neck, head, back, and knees can come into a more organized and integrated relationship that will tend to activate the reflexive response in our postural neuromuscular reflex system, causing a body-wide lengthening response and a more coordinated relationship of parts to occur on an automatic level. When we reach this point, which may take a long time but is very attainable, if we are committed to the process and maintain our attentiveness as we practice, we have really started to uncover the natural working of the primary control. And we begin to see the ways that we have been interfering with it and how it is designed to function in a healthful way. This is, of course, just the beginning as we will continue to undo deeper habits of interference and learn more about the working of the system as we consistently practice directing. But it is the basis for learning about how we use ourselves and how to stop interfering with our natural system, and is crucial for approaching the higher level aspects of this work, in which we try to confront activities such as sitting or speaking, without reverting to our habitual way of interfering with ourselves.